I think it's become rather apparent tonight as Brother Given has ministered to us that this table is a place to be sober. Yeah. There are uh, imaginations that surround us and we all uh, face the temptation, maybe even, of course, temptation from the devil, but maybe even the tendency because of the flesh uh, towards imaginations. Yeah. Thoughts that really have have no they have no genesis in truth or reality, just just thoughts that can come to you. Uh, this is this is the time. If there's any time, this is the time to cast down imaginations. Mm-hmm. It was in the in the garden at the very beginning that that man uh, began this trend, if you will, of imaginations. It, it is good for food, and it is desirable to make one wise. Those were imaginations, because it wasn't. It didn't make them wise. It didn't make them as God. As he said, this is not, this is not a time to be distracted. I know that there's, a, there's plenty of opportunities to to think about a lot of other things. I'm a like I'm a man of like passions and there are at any given time a uh, hundred things that you could give your attention to, yeah. give your thoughts to. And this is part of the good fight of faith, brethren, is is ruling over your thoughts. Yeah. And you you ask the Lord for for grace in this area to be sensitive and to be uh, to be strict with yourself mm-hmm. about what you think about and what you don't think about. And you just just give yourself a little assignment of five minutes or start start smaller, one minute, one solid minute mm-hmm. to think about this truth and nothing else and not be distracted and then grade yourself. And it's sobering, isn't it? Yes, it is. Amen. You got you got to be sober about things like this, and otherwise you won't be able to ask for the grace that you need if you're not sober about it. Mm-hmm. See, they're really the Lord doesn't give any allowance for assumption. Amen. Mm-hmm. He said, "You come to this table, you examine yourself. What's the, what? What does that mean? We need to examine ourselves." And so, there's he, what he's doing is cutting out assumption. Mm-hmm. There is there's no no allowance, no room, no place for assumption concerning yourself. And likewise, uh, to discern the Lord's Lord's body, which is not the church, by the way. You might have heard people say that discerning the Lord's body is is make sure that you're in touch with with the church and know what their needs are and things like this. This is that's that's just a lie. It's discerning he do this in remembrance of me, not you. So, again, he, there, there's, no, there's no room for presuming on what you already know about the Lord. Mm-hmm. You come and discern the Lord's body. You examine yourself and discern, discern the Lord's body. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a point of uh, interest to me that I have never thought about. Brother, this is not something that Brother Given made a point of tonight, but it's something, uh, a thought that was provoked by the things that he ministered. The law prohibited eating blood. That's right. Amen. And the new covenant requires it. That's right. Amen. Uh-huh. I've never thought of that. Amen. It's almost like, and this is, I don't have a lot to say about this because it's like a brand new thought. Mm-hmm. But one thought that did come to mind, it's like this, this cup is so holy mm-hmm. that the Lord reserved yeah. the right. eating of blood until Christ came. Amen. And Christ then he set it in place. So I'm kind of looking forward to thinking more about that. We should conclude then that uh, because of how the Lord uh, set, gave us this table and the things that the apostles following said about it, 
And some of the things that the Apostle Paul said to the church at Corinth are just arresting. Mm-hmm. Said some of, because of how some of you people behave yourselves at this Lord's t- at this table, some of you are sick and weak, and some of you died yeah. because of your behavior at this yeah. table. Mm-hmm. So we should conclude that no man can afford can't no man can afford to ignore Jesus. That's right. As often as you do this, mm-hmm. Amen. And the word, the word meditate, uh, we, um, we don't, don't let the, that's a strong word, meditate. It's, uh, it's work to meditate. Mm-hmm. Thinking, you're always thinking, but you're not always meditating. Is that, isn't that right? Yeah. Meditating is like a, it's like a deeper, mm-hmm. more, more engaged, um, Mental is more more than mental because it's it's a it's a spiritual exercise as well, but it requires more of you to 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 meditate. It's a labor. Mm-hmm. It's like you got a uh, brother Ricky. I think brought this up this morning. Girding up the loins of your mind. It's like it's like a, ga- a a gathering of your of your resources to meditate because Jesus is worthy of it. Mm-hmm. He's worthy of uh, brother Fred in uh, the most recent uh, banner. He said, I don't remember the exact quote, but he said something about our, our meditation along these lines of this being glorifying to God because Jesus is worthy of our meditation. Amen. Think about how much God has said about Jesus. And this, this is an indication of how worthy he is of our thoughts, of our meditation, of our contemplation. So no man can afford to not meditate on Jesus. There are a lot of alternatives being offered. A lot of alternatives. I mean religious alternatives. Uh, Supposing that uh, if we offer this under the guise of the church, then people will be interested. And if we we do this under the name of the church, then it'll, it'll catch people's attention then. I say if they're not interested in Jesus, then we don't have anything for them. That's right. Amen. This is... Kind of an kind of an old saying of what you win them with is yeah. what you win them to. Yeah, that's right. And so if they come, yeah. pardon the analogy, but if they come for hot dogs, that's what they want, yeah, right. isn't it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so this is this is what we have. Yeah. This is what we have unashamedly. This is what we have. And if this is not if this is not enough, mm-hmm. then I, I suggest that. This is what God has offered. He's offered Jesus, yeah. Amen. Yeah. the Son of God, mm-hmm. in whom the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been provoked tonight, and I, I, I trust that you have been too, mm-hmm. that this, this table is not, it's not just a practice. It's not just a ritual. Mm-hmm. I've, been to, I've been to places that I've thought just recently there in, in Cincinnati. I thought... It, it was done so quickly that if I if I didn't have knowledge of what was happening, it it would be it would have just been a mystery. Like what, what, why, how, where, what is going on? What just happened? And Brother Given has made a point in the past that in the uh, the old the more traditional churches, when you came into a church. What what was what you see up at the front? You saw the Lord's table and you saw a pulpit. Yes, sir. Right. Uh-huh. And what did that that was like a testimony of remembering Jesus' yeah. his death and the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. And even that now has changed yes, yeah. in the contemporary scene. So I, I exhort you to and I exhort myself as well to be an expert in Jesus. Amen. And this is a the table is a place to to make headway in those things. So I open up to you now to any...